So how do we solve kinematics problems? Well, in the kinematics videos, which I guess you haven't had a chance to look at, but the systematic method I set out in the kinematics videos is, what I tell people to do is, first, write out the five variables. You write out the five variables, and you indicate the one that the question is asking you for. Now, if you look at each of those equations in the handout, how many variables are there in each of those equations? That's right. So, what do we need in order to be able to use an equation? We need to know three variables. It wouldn't make sense to know all four because then there would be no point using the equation. Right. So, in order to use one of those equations, you need to have numbers for three of these variables. So, you study the information in the problem until you can figure out three things that you know. For example, you might know this, and this, and this. And then you're all ready to pick the right equation to use. Which equation do you want to use? The equation that has the three variables that you know and the one that you're trying to figure out. It would be a waste of time to pick an equation that has time in it, for example, here, because we don't care about that variable. Now, the quickest way to pick out the right equation, then, is to pick the equation that is missing time. That's faster than checking whether it has all four of the variables. Pick the one that's missing the time. So if you look at the handout for each equation, I've also listed which variable it's missing. So let's practice that real quickly. Which equation would we use in this situation? Which is the equation that's missing time for the linear equations? Yeah, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Mm -hmm. On the handout, I put the x component versions of those, but it should be easy to figure out what the y component versions would be. That is the systematic method for doing kinematics. You actually write down all five variables, you indicate which variable you don't know, and then you need three numbers and then you're ready to pick out the equation that deals with those four variables. Uh, a lot of students tend to be lazy and they don't like actually writing these variables. But then they don't really know when they're ready to go to the equations yet. So I really encourage you when you see you're doing kinematics to write out all five variables as a framework for attacking the problem. Well, the nice thing is that if you were able to do translational kinematics, rotational kinematics shouldn't give you much difficulty because it's the same exact approach. Again, the key is we don't want to be lazy. Once we see it's rotational kinematics, we should start by writing down the five kinematics variables, which you have to have memorized. You have to identify which of these the question is asking you for. And then um, how many of the numbers do you need to know? You need to know three numbers, because there's four variables total. For example, you might know this one, this one, and this one. All right, so then where it should go, uh, go in and pick the right equation. So let's see which equation we want now. Right. And the, uh, as you might have seen, the easiest way to do that is to, pick, is to look for the equation that's missing omega final, which are also always so listed here. So you'd want the delta theta equals omega uh, initial times t plus 1 half at squared. Okay. Again, the important thing is not to be lazy and actually write out the five variables so that you can be organized and know when you're ready for the equations. How do you know when you're doing a kinematics problem? The key is that in, in this course, kinematics means constant acceleration kinematics. So when the problem is dealing with constant acceleration, that's a good clue that these are the approaches that you want to use. You can see that we've been assuming there was constant acceleration all along because if the acceleration was changing, we wouldn't know what number to plug in for acceleration because there would be a different number every instant. So we, without saying so, we've been assuming there was constant acceleration all along. Obviously, we're not assuming constant speed. We're assuming the speed is changing. That's why we have an initial speed and a final speed. But we didn't bother saying A initial and A final. And that's because the acceleration is constant. Well, we should do a practice problem to illustrate this. But first of all, we need to go over a couple more concepts. Remember, what was the, well, remember that we have to use radians, generally, for these. At least that's the standard unit. But there are some other units that you're likely to see besides radians. For example, you might see degrees. Well, they need to know how to convert between degrees and radians. Well, do you remember what is the conversion ratio between degrees and radians? Um, we have to say how many degrees is equal to how many radians. Right. Um, two pi radians. Close, but not quite. Okay. Two pi radians is a complete circle. How many degrees are there in a circle? Oh, 360. 360. 
if you'd wanted to, you could have said that pi radians is 180 degrees. Either of those would work. I think this is a little bit easier to remember. We should know that 2 pi is a complete cycle, and that's 360 degrees. Something else that we might see to measure the distance, though, is just revolutions. A revolution is simply when you go completely around. Well, in that case, what would be the conversion between radians and revolutions? How many radians are there in one revolution? Two pi. Yeah, that should be easier. So we can add that to our list of conversion ratios. This actually comes up more often than degrees here. You're very likely to have to deal with revolutions. For example, you might have seen some homework problems that were dealing with RPM. Do you know what that stands for? Revolutions per minute? That's right. Not radians. The abbreviation for radians is RAD. So it's important to know when they say RPM, they don't mean radians per minute, they mean revolutions per minute. Well, there's a good chance then that we might need to translate that into radians. For example, let's say that we have a angular displacement of four radians. Let's do a unit conversion and convert that into revolutions. So let's try doing that on paper like a formal unit conversion. So we know that conversion ratios have one unit on the top and one unit on the bottom. Well, you get to decide who you put on the top and who you put on the bottom. You want to put radians on the bottom to cancel these radians. Well, we know that the number that goes with radians is 2 pi, and the number that goes with revolutions is 1 from our, convert, from our equivalencies here. That tells us that we should be dividing by 2 pi, not multiplying. That's a common mistake that students make when they get lazy and they don't write down the conversion ratio. Well, what did you get there? Um, 6.28. Might be a calculator issue there. Kind of clear that. Let me take a look at what you did. Yeah. So as a calculator issue, anytime there's more than one thing on the top of the bottom of a fraction, you have to tell the calculator that by putting it in parentheses. Otherwise, the calculator doesn't realize that they're both on the top or the bottom. Okay. 0.6366. There we go. So we can round that off to 0.64. Does your instructor require you to ch show significant figures? No. Excellent. Good. I don't like this. All right. So uh, we'll just round things off to what feels good. What, what, what feels good. Do you get to use a calculator on the test? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is an important thing to keep in mind. If there's more than one thing in a numerator or denominator, you have to show that by putting it in parentheses. Now, technically, you don't have to use SI units when you're using the kinematics variable, when you're using the kinematics equations. If you, uh, all you have to do is be consistent. So technically, you could do the whole problem in revolutions. You would just have to measure this in revolutions, this in revolutions per second squared, and this in revolutions per second. On, on, on the other hand, there are some other equations that only work in radians. So sometimes you have to make the conversion. But these equations, kinematics, the kinematics equations will work just as long as all the variables are consistent with each other. I probably should have put that in the handout. So um, those kinematics equations work with any variables as long as you're being consistent. <laughs>